Hello, today we're looking at the work energy approach problem, but this time we got a lot of rolling problems, so let's uh, roll into it. Ha ha ha! Okay, I'm trolling. A uniform spherical shell, that should instantly tell you one thing that the beta of this. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, so we're dropping two things. One is going to be a uniform spherical shell, which means beta is going to be equal to uh, two thirds. And a uniform cylinder, which we know that the beta is equal to, I think, yeah, one half. So both with a mass of 0.7 kilograms and radius of 16 centimeters. They start and roll without slipping. Important, without slipping means that we can use the relationships of this and that. So it's going down the 3.6 meter long ramp down show, shown below. So it's going to down, go down 3.6 meters. Um, the, determine A, the ratio of kinetic energy of the spherical shell to the kinetic energy of the cylinder. And B, this ratio of the angular speed of the spherical shell to the angular speed of the cylinder at the bottom of the ramp. Okay, so first of all, we got to see what's going on here. There's a ball. It's, one of them's a sphere, one of them's a shell, and it's rolling down the ramp. And so what's happening is the gravitational potential energy is changing to kinetic energy as it rolls down the ramp. So what does this mean? That the UG is going to be equal to the K after. Initial is going to be equal to the K after. So this means um, that if the object started at the same height okay so it's m g h is what u g initial is the initial height and we know that h is going to be equal to sine of the distance so let's call this d well they're going down the same distance they have the same mass both with a mass of 0.7 kilograms and gravity is a constant so we know that they're both going to have the same gravitational potential energy initially that means they're going to end with the same uh, kinetic energy so kinetic energy of something over the kinetic energy that's equal to each other that's basically saying like one divided by one is one so that's why this answer is one okay now it's asking for the angular accelerate angular velocity of the object so angular speed of the spherical shell to the angular speed of the cylinder at the bottom of the ramp so for this one, you got to find the velocity at the bottom of the ramp. So let's solve this with the work energy approach. So the system is going to be the shell. Let's just do this one first, the shell, the top, the earth, and the ramp. That means there is no external work done, which means all the energy inside the system is constant. Okay, I don't know what that is, but this pretty much means that the, as we said, the initial gravitational potential energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy at the final point. But the thing is, the kinetic energy is not just translational. So this is going to be one half mv squared plus one half i omega squared because this is pure rotation about point uh, the or like the center of the object this is pure translation so if you have one thing to take away from this video it's just when an object's rolling it's going to have two forms of kinetic energy translational and rotational it's the moving kinetic energy and the rotating kinetic energy so that's going to be equal to mgh so first of all we can replace i with beta mr squared because these are circular objects and we know the beta value we know the mass and we know the radius of the object so we know i um and we can simplify this formula if we like just do one half mv squared plus one half beta m r squared but omega is the same thing as v squared over r squared because um yeah, omega is equal to V over R from the formula we said for no slip earlier, this one.
So that means that pretty much these cancel out. Boom, boom. And we can simplify this to B. So let's just take out the 1 half to the front. Let's take out the V to the front. Let's take out the M. Create a plus 1. So yeah, MGH is equal to this. Mass cancels out. Um, so yeah, we can find the velocity to be equal to 2GH since we like multiply the 2 over 2GH divided by beta plus 1 square root is equal to V final. So that's the velocity at the end, the translational velocity at the very end. And what do we know about this? Well, as we said earlier, is equal to r omega. So if we want to find omega, omega is equal to vt over r. So we can find omega because we know this and we know this. One note is that this radius is often given in centimeters, so make sure you convert them to meters. Okay, so you can do that for the first one, and you get the omega. You get the omega for the second one, and then you do a ratio. That basically means divide. So what you do is get the um, omega of the sphere, and then you divide it by the omega of the cylinder. And then you'll get a number, and that number is your answer for part B. Okay, let's go to the next problem. This time we're going to be asked a very similar question, except it's, I'd say, quite, yeah, like, it's the same approach. You find velocity, and then you solve it. So, let's go through this. A uniform sphere with a mass. Sphere means beta equals two-fifths with a mass of 3.4 kilograms and a radius of 7 centimeters. Don't forget that this is equal to 0 0.07 meters. Starts from rest and rolls down without slipping. The translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy of the sphere about its center of mass after. Keyword center of mass, which means it's going to be smack in the center. After it's rolled down 6.8 meters parallel to the ramp. I forgot to mention this, but don't forget to replace the h with the d sine theta. That's important. Okay. So, first of all, let's solve a translational. So, this one's the same thing again. Gravitational initial is turning into kinetic rotational and kinetic translational. So, to solve this, what we got to do is just say mg d sine theta, well, sine d is the distance on the ramp, and the theta is the angle right here, and that's going to be equal to 1 half beta plus 1 mv squared. So, this is what we got up here, so don't forget this formula. This formula is really useful if you're like glazy and you want to do rolling problems. So now that you know this, you can find V, cancel, cancel, 2GD sine theta, divided by beta plus 1, square root is equal to V final. So now that you know the final velocity, this time you're going to plug it back into the original formula. So if you want to find the translational kinetic energy, 1 half MV squared. You know this, you know this, you know this. Okay, and now for the rotational. So make sure you plug that in there. The rotational is going to be 1 half i omega squared. Same thing as 1 half beta mv squared if you just simplify it. So you know this, you know this, you know this. You can find kinetic rotational. Check mark, smiley face. Okay, now last one I have with me. I just, these are the questions that I had. So, if you get some whack one, rest in peace. Oh, well, it's not a rest in peace. You, you got this. Um, force of 18 newtons applied to the center of mass of a uniform sphere with a mass of 2 kilograms and radius of point, uh, 7 centimeters. Again, 
don't forget 0 0.07 meters convert to meters so the units cancel out the force causes the sphere to roll without slipping again important determine the work done by the applied force and the work done by the friction force as the sphere goes from rest to the rotational speed of 20.6 radians so you know work is equal to the force times the distance that it travels so it's also uh, the magnitude for force is f s sine theta um so yeah that's not really important because the sine theta is going to be equal to one actually is it i think it's cosine theta um yeah we don't talk about that it doesn't matter in the case of this problem um a work done by the force applied so let's see how far does it go um is moving in this direction is applied force and it moves f uh, okay so it gives us an angular speed so with the angular speed we have to find how far it goes because we're doing force times distance or you could actually go from a kinetic rotational speed and then work backwards if that is something that you want to do but this is the way I did it so now that you know this um, and it's a constant force acting so the friction force is also going to be constant which means constant angular acceleration um yeah you can do actually i think i did the kinetic energy approach sorry okay so that means the kinetic rotational is going to be equal to one half uh, I omega squared what do we know we know omega we know r we can find the velocity so omega equals v over r we know this we know this we can find velocity velocity equals omega r so once we find velocity we can set this equal to the one half beta plus one mv squared formula so boom 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 you can find the work done by the force and you may be like but the free body diagram looks like this so here's the origin but if you think of it um th is the gravity doing any work in the direction no because it's moving towards the right and gravity is for, for like look going down so this is doing zero work and fn is also doing zero work but then you might be like the friction force it has to be doing work it does zero work and here's why um the friction force is creating a torque it's actually i don't really know why it does zero work i think i did the math for it um force times the distance all oh, right so let me search something up Okay, yeah, it's F cosine theta. S. So, during the whole distance it travels, FF is going in the opposite direction of the work. That means that it's going to be a 180 degree angle, so F cosine theta is equal to negative 1. So, negative force times the distance. Wait. Actually, I might be tweaking. What would the work done by the friction force? Mm. 
I don't really know why. Oh, alright. Friction force does zero network because, uh, um, actually, yeah, yeah, just, just put zero for this. I don't really know why. I gotta go do work. See ya.